Nostalgia seems to be the theme of 2021 for Sega. I mean, an Alex Kidd remake, a Sonic Colors remaster, and now a remake of the original Super Monkey Ball games. I've only really heard of this series from friends and these awesome videos from Nick Robinson. I recommend giving them a watch. In fact, these videos will be linked in the description. From these sources, the series was never really in a great spot. Like it had a very strong start with Super Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Deluxe, then it fell hard. For someone like me, with no attachment and little knowledge of the series' decline, it was astonishing that this franchise continued for as long as it did. One day, I made the purchase and I bought Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. Okay, I didn't really buy it for Banana Blitz. It was just for the copy of Sonic Forces which I did not own on Nintendo Switch. Before that, my only experience was its demo, which didn't go well. Then when I played the full game, I didn't enjoy it. But now, we're in the year 2021, and a remake of the original games is now available, and there is legitimate hype behind it from fans of the series. So what is this video about? This is coming from the perspective of somebody who has never played the originals before, and it's also to let you know whether or not you should buy this game. First off, I want to thank Sega for providing a review code for Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania on Xbox One. This means I will not be able to try out the gyro controls without purchasing a copy for myself. Anyone who knows me knows that I collect physical games for my Switch, so it will not be possible since the game is not available physically as of the writing of this video. I also want to get out of the way that unfortunately I will not be covering the party games, since I really wanted to dive into the main game itself and try to understand the gameplay of Super Monkey Ball. But there's also content in this game that I do want to cover, which would be the DLC. Just like Sonic Colors Ultimate Banana Mania was released with a deluxe edition, where the owners of that game can enjoy owning extra content. With Sonic Colors Ultimate, one of the more frustrating pieces of content in that game was the Ultimate Music Pack. It was absurd to charge money for three remixes and have absolutely no option to turn off the other remixes. With Banana Mania, all of the remixes are in the game by default, but the player has to go out of their way and pay for the original music. As I stated in the Sonic Colors Ultimate review, there are plenty of remakes and remasters that include the original music, so I don't understand why this has to be DLC. At the very least, there is an option to switch between the new and old music, which is a step up from Sonic Colors Ultimate, but paying for it seems a little ridiculous. At least now we can turn this into a positive because honestly, I'm a little conflicted on which soundtrack I prefer, because they're both fantastic. In fact, let's get an early music showcase of some of my favorites. While the music is outstanding, there are other aspects to the audio that could have been better. For starters, there's only one announcer for the game, though it would have been nice to have Brian Matt reprise his role as the announcer. Making it an option would have been great as well, though I think longtime fans would pick Brian's voice. The only complaint that could really affect the gameplay experience is the sound while rolling around. In the original, you could hear how much faster you were going, but in Banana Mania, louder and faster sounds do not exist, which is a shame. It won't affect the game to where it's unplayable, but it does let players know if they need to slow down or even speed up for whatever they're trying to accomplish in that specific level. And my final complaint has to do with the DLC characters. They don't have many sound effects, which is a shame because it would have been nice to hear Sonic, Tails, Kazuma, and Beat have their own grunts or other sound effects from their respective games. Oh, and the consoles too. I mean, who wouldn't want to hear the Dreamcast beep when it falls? Okay. No one really wants to hear that in person, but if it were to be included in the game, it would make more sense. And if it gets too annoying, players can turn down the sound effects without affecting the music or the announcer, because look at that! Options! What an idea! 
Well done, team. Visually, Banana Mania looks really nice. Some parts look a little simplistic, but there were some levels that really took me by surprise. It could have been that I was used to looking at okay looking environments, then something like a reflection on the floor or a good looking waterfall took me by surprise. Some things will stand out to let you know that this is a budget remake such as low poly models in the background or some super blurry plants. Thankfully, the backgrounds don't need to be super sharp because the focus is on the levels, so it works. Plus, this game is going to tilt a crap ton, so super small details aren't really going to be taken in since the player is on a time limit. As you play the game, you can earn points by beating levels and completing certain missions. You can spend these at the point shop and unlock many cosmetic items as they range from OK to Gone Gone with that drip. It's a shame I can't add stuff to Sonic or add a top hat to that Saturn, but what's there is OK. I just wish there were more color options when it comes to those specific pieces of clothing or the different ball designs. You can even buy stuff for picture mode, which I didn't really get to mess with except for this shot of Gone Gone. And finally, you can even get some video filters. They're not great. CPN and Toy Mode have this really weird grainy look, and Monochrome reminds me of an old black and white TV I had, but it's not really something I want in this game. There's more unlockables, but I'll get into them later, but for now, it's time to get into that gameplay. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania aims to recreate the feel of the originals. By this, I mean no jumps, no stupid hand-holding excessive rails, and no bosses. Eh, let's put an asterisk on that jump. The objective of the game is to get into the goal within the time limit by any means necessary. You do this by tilting the levels so the ball can navigate the many obstacles. There's something really charming about this super simple control scheme. It's just the player using one analog stick to get to the end. That is, if you don't enable some of the quality of life features in this game. The jump does exist, but the execution is brilliant. You'll need to unlock it, and it's one of the most expensive items in the game, at 30,000 points. This means that the player will need to learn the controls of the game for some time before earning this jump. While longtime fans will call this sacrilege, if the player unlocking it isn't very skilled at the game and wants to make some levels easier, I really don't see anything wrong with that. Super Monkey Ball, at least the originals, were some of the more difficult games due to their arcade origins. At least that's the case for Super Monkey Ball 1. What I'm saying is that the jump might give them an easier time, but there are some levels where the jump will not help at all. Thankfully, lives have been completely removed, which gives anyone as many tries as they need to see the game in its entirety. This is something I was able to benefit from, as there were many levels that I spent nearly an hour on. If the jump and unlimited lives are not enough, or if the game is getting brutal and the player has no jump at all, the devs did include a helper function. At the cost of some points, the player can be pointed in the right direction, and slow motion can be enabled to assist the player to the goal. I like that this is an option, but can I have an option to remove this notification? For a player trying to improve without giving up and using it, it really gets in the way. Sure, it only happens once after five fallouts, but it still gets annoying. If that's not enough, by spending a lot of points, players can skip the level that they're on and move on to the next. Here's my recommendation. Go for the helper function instead because you're going to be burning through a lot more points just to skip that level. You might be asking yourself, What's the incentive of not using these if players can be handed the goal in nearly every level? Well, people who just want to see the game in its entirety without playing as intended will not care and move on when they're done. If it's someone who wants to improve and want a visual indicator of that improvement, they'll eventually return to that level and turn off the helper function. Then after more improvement, they'll turn off the jump. In Banana Mania, there is a blinking icon whenever a player beats a level with the helper function. The game will also not give as many points when the player beats a level, so unlockables will take even longer to obtain. As for the jump, best times are not recorded for the levels beaten with the jump enabled, even when the player doesn't use it. My completion of 8 bracelets was ruined because of that. So if the player cares about their best time or wants to see how much they've improved, they'll remove all these features and give the levels a legitimate attempt. But how do you know a player will do this? Because I was that player. Like I mentioned earlier, aside from Banana Blitz HD, I had no experience with this series, so the level design is a stark contrast to what I had to put up with with the previous release. This also means that I needed to use everything in my arsenal to see the levels to the end. At times, I lost my patience and used these features. In fact, I was originally going to beat as much as I can, use the jump and helper as needed, then call it a review. Fortunately, something kept me from just stopping and I kept coming back and that's what I consider one of the greatest strengths of Banana Mania, because it's a strength of the originals. When I started, some of the hurdles I had to get around were the slopes, narrow pathways, and navigating the character in midair. 
My strategy when I was new was to take everything slow so that I can avoid panicking and falling off levels. But the game eventually lets you know that you can't do that all the time. It pushed me to learn how to balance myself on narrow pathways. Getting launched in the air is still a bit of a crapshoot because sometimes it's easy to land and other times I'm just gone. But these don't require a lot of time to adjust to. Slopes, on the other hand, are my kryptonite. For whatever reason, these things gave me more problems than anything else. I couldn't get a good feel for where I needed to be or how I needed to approach it. It's a trial and error thing, but it also feels like the game wasn't properly made for some of the obstacles I faced. And I wasn't too far off. I spoke to a friend of mine who was also going through the game, and we came to the conclusion that the controls aren't ideal for specific areas. Hear me out. In Banana Mania, making tiny adjustments is a bit more difficult because very slight movements with the analog stick only moves the camera. I know it moves the camera with the original control scheme, but I really wish there was a way to disable it when I used the right analog stick for the camera. It almost has this dead zone, which doesn't help when I'm forced on a level with narrow pathways. I'm looking at you, Catwalk. What's even funnier is that I was able to beat Catwalk in DX mode, but for some reason this was impossible in original mode. This is where I was informed that the game isn't exactly like the originals. Using Catwalk as an example, it's intentionally misleading. The original level itself has invisible slopes that will allow the player to never fall off, assuming they don't move too fast. But these invisible slopes don't exist in Banana Mania. When I was learning how to play and I was improving, I kept hearing the phrase, this is easier in the original games. So I said screw it and booted up Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 on totally legitimate hardware. Okay, fine, I emulated it because getting a copy of Super Monkey Ball Deluxe on Xbox would have taken way too long and I have a video to make. After my time with the originals, I discovered a couple things I liked and disliked more about the remake. The movement is not as good with the remake. Levels like Floor Bent and Exam C were easier to beat in the original, but that also doesn't mean I didn't die. I had my share of fallouts, but it didn't come close to the amount that I had in Banana Mania. I will say the camera control is much better in the remake, since you can adjust it to your liking. While there isn't anything overly annoying with the original camera, I felt it jerked around a bit more when you made slight movements, thus throwing me off. The remake gave me exactly what I needed in terms of camera control, so that I'm not facing the abyss or a hold when I make a turn, and I can fix it on the fly with the right analog stick. I'm sure I can adjust to it with the originals, but I was only playing it to understand it a bit more, and this is what I got out of it. The level design in Banana Mania and in the originals are phenomenal. You can play through them on the intended path, but at some point you're not going to be able to take said path at a very slow pace. That's where the player might need to get creative. It can be as simple as taking a shortcut, or my personal favorite, going as fast as possible to either breeze through a difficult level or looking for a skip out of nowhere. It's similar to a shortcut, but it's different in execution. Even when I look at a level and say, I wonder if I can bounce here, and it actually works. This is where the game is at its absolute strongest. There were so many levels where taking the craziest approach worked and I'm rewarded for my experimentation. And this is what had me coming back. If I can do this with some levels, what other levels can I choose? What other levels can I approach in an unorthodox manner? And then I also asked what other levels can I just do really stupid things in and somehow manage to succeed. And it actually worked. Like, when it worked, it was hilarious. So yeah, once it started to click, I returned to levels like 8 Bracelets, Soft Cream, Warp, and 3D Maze. These were all levels that I had a lot of issues with. And I figured after all of this time that I've spent just learning how the game works, I decided to return to it. And aside from 3D Maze, I didn't have a lot of problems. I had to replay the entirety of World 10 just so I can have best times on there. This was how fed up I was about five to six hours in. With the knowledge I have of the game now, I was able to breeze through most of those levels without any issues. Warp still gave me a bit of a tough time because I'm a little iffy with the slopes in the game, but I'm sure it wouldn't take too long to get used to it. At the very least, I beat the level. I came out of this game in a different mindset than I did when I finished my first session. Rather than calling it unfair and being unsure of how people can be fans of this quote-unquote trash, I got it. I understood why people loved this kind of game. As of this review, I've currently invested 22 hours into the game, and I'm still wanting to jump back in and get better because there are still levels that give me grief. Stamina Master, I will master you. On second thought, I should rephrase that. I'll beat that level one day. I have yet to play every single mode in this game. I'm still going in and giving the levels my absolute best shot. Who knows, maybe I'll beat Dark Banana Mode legit. Which, speaking of Dark Banana Mode, it actually taught me how to beat Cross Floors better than the Helper Mode ever did. Which is absolutely crazy. And also kind of cool. 
there's a ton of content in this game, with levels and modes from the original games, deluxe, and even gold banana mode. Okay, on second thought, that one's not much fun. You have to comb the entire level trying to get every single banana. Sure, it'll allow you to become more familiar with the levels, but you can skip this one. It's also the only mode locked behind DLC, so if you don't have it, you're not missing out on much. As for the rest of the game, even with its faults, it's excellent. If you haven't played a game in the series, this is a fantastic starting point. Series veterans, you might have a bit to adjust to, but I'm sure you'll love it too. And that'll do it for this video. I'm sure there would be a lot to say about the party games, but I really wanted to see what made Super Monkey Ball special for longtime fans of the series. I do think the devs missed out on the opportunity with online multiplayer, considering that the world is still at a point where meeting in person is a bit so-so. So having an online multiplayer would have been fantastic. This honestly was a great experience, and I found a new series that I could be hopeful for. I would love to see a brand new game in the series, one that takes what makes Banana Mania great and what made the originals iconic. The only thing I would really want are the controls refined a bit and same for the physics. That's all I have to say about Banana Mania. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give this video a like and subscribe if you're new. Clicking the bell icon wouldn't hurt either. At this time, I want to thank the members of Nux Club Plus. These are the individuals who are supporting the channel monetarily with a $1 or $5 membership. The names of the $1 members are on screen right now, and I want to say a thank you to all of you. And I also want to give a shout out to those who are in the $5 tier. They are Dork in a Hat, Tactical Discord, Martin YT Plays, Ultra Sonic Hero, Gamer Entertainment TV, and Francis Nam, or NGAM. If you do see this part of the video, please let me know how you have to say the name so that way I can get it right in future videos. If you want to support the channel in a bigger way and get the shout out that these individuals have, you can either go through the YouTube channel membership or you can become a patron on patreon.com slash knuckles channel. Aside from videos that are kind of short notice like this one, you'll have access to videos at least one day before everyone else as a way of thanking you all for your extra support. And with that, feel free to follow me on my social media and I hope you all have a wonderful and safe day. I'll see you for the next video. Until next time, take care.